Hi guys, this is the Work Your Money podcast with host Michelle Wong, and I have a great guest. His name is Donnie Fletcher. Hi Donnie, how are you doing? Hey, good afternoon. How are you? I am doing awesome. A little a little under the weather per se, <laughs> but I'm managing. It's my phone. <laughs> so Donnie, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so um, my name is Donnie Fletcher, originally from Cleveland, Ohio, um, born and raised. Um, I had a pretty tough background. Um, my mother and my father um, did drugs when I was younger, growing up. And um, me and my siblings, I have three older brothers, I mean, three little brothers, three older sisters. And we were put in foster home for eight years. So I was in foster care from one until I was nine years old. Um, and then um, she, my mother ended up getting her life together and ended up getting us back when uh, I was nine years old. Then I lived with my mother from nine to 12. She ended up passing away from a brain aneurysm. And then uh, from there, I ended up uh, being homeless for a little bit uh, for about two to three years. I was kind of bouncing around from house to house, uh, different family members. And um, in between that time, um, my uncle ended up bringing me in and um, ended up living with him and ended up getting very good at football training and things like that. And then I ended up getting scholarship to Boston College and um, played two years with the Jets. And then now I'm uh, running a digital agency. So oh, I guess wow. that's like the cliff notes. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we're going to go into detail. Well, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, um, Donnie um, has a background as a former pro athlete. He uh, played for the Jets. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just he hearing his life story, it, it was amazing. We had a discussion. We actually met at um, a meetup. It was a, um, yes. an investment meetup. And from there, we, you know, we just started talking and, you know, it, it's amazing when you, and I say this all the time, uh, I love hearing people's, you know, life story, their journey. And the reason is, is because we all come from different backgrounds. And one of the things that interests me when I hear about someone's journey is where they were and where they're at and where they want to go. And that's an important factor when you're trying to put yourself together and knowing what, you know, and figuring yourself out, finding yourself and being able to uh, take any talents or skills that you have naturally and basically taking that and using it, um, you know, down the road in, in your journey. And the other thing that um, that you mentioned about, you know, your, your background, um, coming from parents that were not at that at that moment fit to be able to take care of you um, and then you know just go through all of you know yeah. the situation with, with um, going through you know foster foster homes from you know from from that time frame um, did that like as a child did that, shape you to who you are now um was it something that you know like um because you mentioned that you that you, you you started to get into um into sports football particularly you started to get into it more was it that at that moment as a child did you feel like hey you know um let me put my all into this so that i can become you know, a player? Was it like, was it something that you just knew as a, as a kid that mm -hmm. this would be either my way out or this mm -hmm. is my, this is going to be what I want to do, you know, when, I, when you grow up? Mm -hmm. To be truthful, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when, I, when I was young, um, like I said, you know, I've been through uh, foster care early on. I don't remember too much because I was so young when uh, we were in foster care. So majority of the stories um, and, and memories come from my older sisters. Um, actually, when I was in foster care, um, we actually, actually two of my brothers got adopted. So I haven't seen them uh, since we were in foster care. But I think the biggest thing that I've learned um, from just going through all the hardships in my life is resiliency. I think that's the biggest thing I've taken from, from anything 
is just to believe in myself. But like early on, I was just like, you know, any other kid that grew up in the inner city, you know, um, any other male, I was, I should say I was a knucklehead, you know, Mm -hmm. I was, um, from like 12 until I was like 14, I was in a gang running around, you know, doing, (laughs) raising, can I cuss our curse on here? Is it okay? Or raising? Yeah, 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 go ahead. Raising hell. (laughs) (laughs) I was, uh, raising hell. Um, but I, I didn't start really taking football serious until I moved in with my uncle. Um, and my uncle is like my role model, like my everything in my life. You know, he taught me how to be a man. But before I, you know, I moved in with him. And even when I first moved in with him, you know, we butted heads a ton just because I was still stuck in my ways. Um, you know, before I moved in with him, I, it was I took care of myself. For the most part, I bounced around from house to house. So for, for the most part, I had to, you know, figure out how I was going to eat. You know, I had to figure out how I was going to get clothes, things like that. So I was literally taking care of myself. So I was stuck in those ways. So when I moved in with my uncle and he's telling me about structure and discipline, you know, I kind of like I was like, no, I'm going to do it my way. So early on, we butted heads a lot. And I didn't take football serious at all. It was mm-hmm. just something to do mm-hmm. to, for me not to be out running around in the streets. Um, I didn't start really taking it serious until my sophomore year when um, I actually transferred schools. So when I moved in with my uncle, he lives in the suburbs, a suburb in uh, Cleveland called, right outside of Cleveland called Euclid, Ohio. Mm -hmm. So I was going to that high school originally my freshman year. And then I had um, transferred to a school actually in the inner city of Cleveland called Glenville, but Glenville, excuse me, but it's a powerhouse um, in football in high school football well-known uh, powerhouse. They send people to um, to college every year. Uh, Tegan Jr. from Ohio State, Troy Smith won the Heisman back in 2006. Those are just a few people that went to that high school. Um, but until I went there and I actually saw um, like other people, um, you know, kind of working the same way and saying the same, and, and um, I kind of saw Coach Ginn, mm-hmm. uh, Coach Ted Ginn, who's the head coach at Glenville. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw two people, then I had two people saying the same thing, you know, talking about structure, discipline, you need to, uh, you know, work hard if you want to be successful. You know, they were kind of preaching, you know, um, the same exact message. So it kind of clicked for me then, sophomore year. Mm -hmm. And then that's kind of when it like took off um, and I started taking it serious. And then I was like, just dialed in. It was just like football, like 24 seven, like literally 24 seven. I was like on a schedule, everything. I didn't go out in high school that much. I was just like, this is my opportunity to, you know, um, change my life, not only my life, but my family's life, you know, um, and that that's kind of how I took it. And I just like just literally I would work so hard. I, like my schedule was I would wake up, I would go run uh, hills and stairs in the morning at six o'clock, come back, shower, um, go to school. Once I got out of school. I go to uh, practice. Then I'll go to my uncle's practice. He was a high school coach uh, at, a, at a school not too far from my uh, Euclid uh, called Shaw High School. I would go to their practice, get another practice in. Then after that, go to the trainer then come back, do some studying, then go to sleep and do the same routine like every single day. And, um, you know, all that hard work ended up paying off. You know, I did that for a whole year, my sophomore year. And then I got my first scholarship my sophomore year that summer from uh, Bowling Green. And then after that, you know, I saw that hard work pays off. It was like (laughs) I was like it was like a drug. I was hooked. (laughs) So I was like, I'm going to do I'm I'm just going to, you know, put my all into this because I have opportunity to, you know, change, change some lives, not only my lives, but, you know, my sisters, we all have been through that hardship. You know, they don't have the same opportunity that I have to, you know, go to college and um, have an opportunity to, you know, change, change the atmosphere and, and change, you know, our, our, the way the way we grew up, you know. So that's probably the biggest thing that, that I, I've learned from my uncle and just going through those hardships is like just, you know, whatever you want to be, you can really be. I know people typically say that, but it's true. You could be whatever you want to be if you really put your mind to it and you surround yourself around the right people mm-hmm. and you put the work in. I've always I live off of in due season. You read what you saw. Yeah, you know? so that's if you, a, if you if that's one hundred percent right. If you put in if you put in the work, it may not happen right away. You know, it may not happen. You know, this month or or a week from now or you know a year from now. But if you continue to put in that work, it's going to eventually pay off. You know, and surround yourself by, around the right people. So that's something that I really did. You know, when I went to to uh, when I went back to Glenville. Um, 
you know, in, in, in the school, inner city, uh, a school in the inner city, I knew a lot of kids that went there. You know, it was a lot of kids from my neighborhood, you know, uh, when I was out there running the streets that went to that high school, but I had to separate myself from them. You know, I think if I didn't do that, you know, I, I could have got caught up in a lot of things and I wouldn't be here now. You know, literally everyone I grew up with that didn't that didn't play football are dead or in jail. Mm -hmm. You know, I still I do still have friends that are, are very doing successful things that I went to high school with, you know, at Glenville that I played with. But like the people that were I was out there running the streets with, you know, literally every single one of them are dead or in jail. Wow. So but you know what? It's 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 so true. Um there were a few things that you kind of mentioned in between. Um, one of them, you were um, mentioning that you have to disassociate yourself with people that are not going to lift you up. Mm -hmm. if, if not, they're going to bring you down. And unfortunately, that can be family, can be friends. Um, you know, it, it can be colleagues. Um, if you, you know, associate with your colleagues after, uh, after hours from business. But it's really to do with the mindset absolutely 100 mm -hmm. percent um mindset is is a is a a big factor uh you can be thinking of doing something but if you don't have the right mi mindset it it won't happen mm -hmm. um if you're thinking negatively and say this is not going to happen this then guess what you're putting that out that energy is out in the universe and then what happens the universe is replying by giving you what the negative stuff but if you if you put your mindset and say I am going to achieve this I will achieve this that goes in and it manifests and that's that's one of the things that I say day in day out people that I have on on here on the show people that I talk to successful people they always have that mindset that it will happen and and everything else falls in place. Now, some people, or let's say majority of the people have have this train this way of thinking that okay, I'm going to put in X amount of time and if things don't go right away, I give up. Mm -hmm. One of the things that people need to understand is that when you want something bad enough, you don't care how long it takes, you're going to put in 110% of your time and energy to make that happen. You'll be patient about it because not everything comes to you on a whim. It takes time. You have to be patient and you have to have faith. You have to believe in yourself in order for that to really go and the momentum keeps going and, and it goes into um, in the direction that you want. And uh, you know, it. And it's always, it's it's amazing that every time that I have someone in and, and we have this conversation, it's always the same, the same thing. And that says a lot. It means that we, that we all are like-minded and that means that we, we are positive people with positive energies. It, and, and I'm not saying that, you know, the other people are, are bad or anything like that. It's just that they don't have the... I don't know if it's like the that drive yeah. to really go and take things to that level. And sometimes, believe me, I I I I'm very honest when I when I get frustrated with certain things because things don't pan out. But then I have to kind of remind myself, hey, you know what? This happens for a reason, and usually it does. Um, Today is one example. I have a little <laughs> bit of setback um, regarding certain things, but you know what? I pull it through. I I, I can't disappoint. The listeners, I can't disappoint the people that are 100% supporting me. I can't disappoint, you know, people like you, uh, mm -hmm. my guests. I can't disappoint anybody. I can't disappoint myself because this is my journey. This is my my path to continuously go out and be able to, you know, connect with other people and, and bring, you know, good people, role models, people that are successful to be able to, to come here and talk about their journey. So with that said, um, Donnie, let's uh, talk a little bit into the transition because you, you talked about, you know, playing um, football, um, being an athlete. Mm -hmm. Tell us um, your journey once you were in, you know, the NFL and you were playing. Mm -hmm. And also tell us a little bit of 
the transition after because mm -hmm. I want you to tell that story to our okay. listeners okay so I guess I'll just kind of start from um, like high school and just kind of like go all the way through like okay. on a football end so uh, once once like I said I had uh, got my first scholarship when I was a sophomore um, from Bowling Green um, and then they start rolling in I ended up by my senior year being one of the top players in the state of Ohio and I ended up, um, I had over 50 scholarships and I decided to uh, go to Boston College. And the reason why I chose that school is just because I, I knew that I would get the best of both worlds. I'll get an opportunity to play in one of the biggest conferences and play against a ton of great athletes, you know, on a week, week to week basis um, by going and playing in the ACC. And then also get one of the, you know, a great, great education. So that was one of the reasons why I chose BC. Cause I knew football wasn't going to last forever, you know, um, whether I played, you know, um, 10 years or if I played two years, you know, let's say I played 10 years, you know, I come in at 21, you know, my, my career ends at 31. What are you going to do from 31 until, you know, 60 years old or, or until you're, you're 70 years old, you know? So I always kept that in mind and my uncle and, and coach Ted again, always kept that, you know, um, and they always, kept that in my mind that, you know, football doesn't last forever. So that was one of my reasons why I chose Boston College. Then when I got to Boston College, I ended up playing uh, four years, started as a true freshman, um, had a huge year my junior year where, um, you know, I ended up being making the all ACC team. I had an opportunity to leave um, college early. Um, I was projected as a, a second to third round pick uh, my junior year. But, you know, after I sat down with my family, um, I decided it was best for me to go back so I can get my education. And then uh, the crazy thing is I ended up getting injured my senior year, came into the year projected as a first round draft pick, ended up getting injured, uh, like broke some bones in my, in my back, had like an up and down season and um, ended up once the season was over um, going undrafted, which was pretty tough for me um, coming into the season as being a projected first round pick and then ended up going undrafted. Um, but then, you know, I ended up playing two years, had some injuries, ended up getting released. And then after I got released, I ended up going playing in the CFL for uh, a year and the AFL for a year. And then ended up tearing, uh, blowing out my knee, my ACL. Um, and then I was just like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to, you know, go into the real world and see, you know, see, see what I can do. And I'm not going to lie. It was it was tough. You know, it wasn't easy. Um, you know, I had no direction. I had a degree in human development, which is education. I didn't really want to go that route. I, I knew I wanted to make some, you know, money in the business, in the business uh, industry somehow, some way. Didn't really have any skills. I've been playing football, you know, my whole entire life since I was eight years old. So um, it, it was real rough. I ended up going, moving back to Boston, becoming an a, a, uh, executive recruiter. And I did that for a year. I was like, yeah, this is, you know, the, the, the hours were crazy. You know, I was working, I was living in um, a city outside of Boston and I was driving into Boston. It was like an hour and 30 minute commute. I had to be in the office at 7 a.m. So I had to get up at five, drive all the way there. And then I would get off at like eight, nine o'clock. So I would literally wake up, it'd be pitch dark. Oh and then God. I'll go back, I'll leave the office and it'd be pitch dark. I was like, yeah, this, I can't see myself doing this, you know, for the next 10 years. So I was like, you know, I had to go back to the drawing board and I was like, okay, what do I really, really want to do? You know, um, and then I was like, okay, well, I want to eventually open my own business. So let me get some type of skills. Um, I was like, oh, maybe I can, you know, start applying, go to move to New York. I kind of like, I literally moved to New York. Like, <laughs> I was like, I quit my job, not having no idea, not having a job lined up or anything. And I was like, you know, I'm just gonna, you know, move to New York, find a job and, you know, try to open my own company. <laughs> it sounds crazy. I know it sounds completely crazy, but I just believed in myself. You know, I was like, I'm gonna take the same thing the same work ethic, the same, you know, mental strength, the same resiliency that I put in football, I'm going to, you know, put that into, you know, um, me opening up my own company. But it, it was that transition was so, so hard. So I ended up moving here. I worked at, I ended up getting a job at Yelp, um, worked in, uh, in sales, which was rough. 
<laughs> but I learned a lot of skills there, you know, and that was the whole point of me doing it. You know, I learned, you know, um, how to communicate with people on a business level, um, you know, the sales process, um, marketing, how to market, what people are looking for. Um, and then I ended up connecting back with one of my friends from college who uh, he's a web developer. Mm -hmm. And um, we ended up kind of like his weaknesses were my strengths, my strengths were his weaknesses. And uh, we kind of just came together, merged together, and um, we ended up creating Tangerine. And it's a digital agency where we develop design and market websites. Some of our top clients are the Hip Hop Hall of Fame, uh, LeafLink. Uh, what the Hip Hop Hall of Fame is, it's just like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but for hip hop artists. Mm -hmm. Um, they're actually, they just got a $180 million bid to open up a museum in Harlem uh, oh, wow. in September of 2018. And um, so that's that's like one of our biggest clients. But we have over 13 clients in Boston and New York. But um, it, it was tough going, going <laughs> like that transition was rough. <laughs> but you know what? Um, and this is from what I've seen in ex um, from experience mm -hmm. from, from people overall. Um it's certain individuals there's something in them that they have that determination to you know to just do things no matter what and the other thing too is and, and, and we were having this discussion before is that when you have a situation in front of you um most people do not react right away um what i mean by that is you can have something lingering in the in in the in the back of your mind or or a situation that's there it's at a distance and instead of trying to uh you know kind of plan ahead people don't do that uh, you know it, it's just what it's a, a a human um behavior it's a habit that we don't act on something until that situation is a few inches away from us and that's where we kind of react and you know was it some it was it a blessing in disguise it was a blessing in disguise in a sense because it 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 took that to kind of propel you into where you are now mm -hmm. and you're now in in you know you're in independent you're an entrepreneur you basically are your own ceo you're calling the shots um you're you're doing things that from what i hear you have passion for mm -hmm. and you know you you got hurt before mm -hmm. you got hurt a few times but you you, you know you kind of bounced back you kept going you kept going now you have this wall yeah. and you had to go through like trying to figure things out you you know you you worked and you did your thing and Correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. When you were working in that, you were like, damn it, I have to really do this. I have yeah. to go in. <laughs> I have to put in my time. This is not what I want to do. This is not my passion. What the hell am I doing? I have to pay the, you know, I have yeah. to remind yourself, oh, I have to pay the bills. Oh, my God. And, you know, these are all the things that, that goes through a person's mind, especially when you're kind of forced to do it, but mm -hmm. you don't want to do it. it, it it's just... It, a, a way to uh, be able to survive and um, it was that you know that that drive that said okay you know what screw it let me go and start fresh let me move out let me just go to a new place um, sometimes shifting uh, energy yeah. definitely uh, gets you uh, more motivated to do something and uh, the other thing I don't know if, if this is like what you were thinking at the moment it's like what else do do I have to lose yeah nothing else <laughs> nothing else because um, and and it's it's always going to happen to each and every one of us I don't care if you are the wealthiest person on the planet at some point in time you you you're going to experience some kind of setback. You're going to experience some kind of obstacle. You're, you're, you know, and the factor is, what are you going to do? Are you just going to say, okay, I'm, I'm done. You're going to give up, or is it you're going to go forward and you're going to keep going at it? Because again, it's what do I have to lose? You have yeah. nothing to lose, but everything to gain. Yeah, and that's one of my um, biggest things. I, I feel like I have no 
fear of failure at all. And I think that's that's what kind of like drives me is because I'm not afraid to fail. You know, I'll, I'll try anything. If, if I put my mind to it, I truly believe that I can achieve it, you know, and that's the thing. Just like you said, you know, it's how people react. You know, it's peaks and valleys in life. You know, you're never going to be, you know, super high. You're never going to be, you know, super low. It's peaks and valleys. And it's how you react to those peaks and valleys. You know, when you're when you're at that high, you know, are you being arrogant? Are you spewing that out in, in, into the universe? Are you arrogant? Are you being cocky? When you're at your lowest, are you, you know, doubting yourself? You know, are you, you know, feeling, feeling bad for yourself? You know, if you can keep that you know, even kill in between you know those what? peaks and valleys. It's sometimes that's the most important thing. And it's not easy. Don't get me wrong. I'm not tough. perfect. It's not, it's not tough. You know, I it, don't get me wrong. I'm not perfect. You know, I no, have my I, down days I'm the, I'm the where same. I feel bad for myself. And I have my good days. But we're human. Like, yeah, and that's, we're human, and, yeah, definitely. we're human. We're all yeah. going to have that moment. I have mm-hmm. my moments yeah. and, you know, and I'll be very candid. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I have my moments and just this past couple of weeks have been a little stressful um mm-hmm. just doing multiple things at once you know uh working on what i'm i i love to you know i i love this being on the podcast i love when i have the opportunity to be in front of the camera and and, and do the the whole process in front of the camera um i love it um i love just the I, I guess the the process the uh, the energy behind it when you when you're uh, for me anyway when I am on camera or on the radio podcast it's like a switch it's like I start like my personality just come comes to life um, not that I'm saying I'm not like that uh, <laughs> uh, outside of that I'm always like this it's just that um, this is just my natural personality so when I start feeling a certain way it's not it's not my true self. Yeah. And I, you know, doing the podcast, getting things moving along, because I'm in the process now transitioning the, the, the podcast into a TV show as well. So it's like I'm recording on radio, but I'm also doing to, uh, uh, TV. So it's like it's, yeah, you know, it's great, uh, great at, uh, on, on both ends. Yeah. And then I have, you know, other things that I do on the side. I have like this this event. I have a women's event coming up and it's just like other things that trickle down. And then it's like I have people like clients that are like, hey, c- can I meet with you or whatever? And then there's like they can't meet at the time or something. And then this, it kind of just throws everything out of the loop. So I get a little stressed and then it's like, why am I doing this? Or, you know, or you have like your little meltdown or you have to vent or something. And I had my moment uh, not too long ago. And thank God that I have, you know, uh, great people around me that I can just, you know, vent and and kind of like be my other you know my other side my crazy self meaning like I can just say what I need to say and kind of like get it out of my system and you know I, I had you know my my business partners my co-hosts they they're you know we're like a family I it's like having a younger brother and an older brother so I I kind of like tell them you know like this is insane that this and this and this and then I have my advisory board which consists of you know six women and there and I was like, I, I don't know if I should just shut this down. And, you know, and they're like, no, you know, this and it's human. It's like you have your moments. Not every day is going to be, you know, all uh, roses. It's not going to be the best. But you have to also allow, you know, allow yourself to to go through the process of feeling the way you want to feel. Get it out of your system. But it doesn't mean that you have to go and you know give up it's like okay i toss in the towel i'm done um it's always going to be like that yeah. you're always going to have your days that you're not going to be feeling your best and it you know and, and you're human you're oh it's just part of who you know who we are that's how we are programmed if anybody goes and says well i wake up and i'm always feeling that's <laughs> that's, a that's a crock <laughs> of bullshit okay <laughs> unless you're like a robot that is not the case um you know it, it's it's that is not a, hu- a human uh a characteristic a human habit um we're always going to feel a certain way um and and it's and we're entitled to um as long as you remember you know and be able to to get that out of your system you you know you just have to keep going ahead that that's the bottom line 
and for you and for you to say hey you know sometimes i don't feel like that that's good that's 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 okay that is expected because you know we're we're human you know we're always going to feel a certain way we're going to feel depressed we're going to feel angry we're going to feel all of these emotions and we're entitled to feel those emotions because that's just in our traits um but overall i mean getting back to I don't want, sometimes i do get <laughs> sidetracked okay. but getting back to um everything that i was saying before I commend you for what you're doing because here you are, you know, you, 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 you put in all this, this time and said, you know, I want to get in. I want to be a, you know, I want to be an athlete. I want to be an NFL player. You know, you go, go through the motions. You're, you're, you're hyped. You're, you're going in and you're saying, okay, I'm going to be doing this until X amount of time. And then, you know, things happen, circumstances happen. You get curveballs thrown, thrown at you. And then it's like, okay, now what do I do? Mm -hmm. But you were able to, you know, go through the pro go through the steps of trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And then you, you went through those steps, you went through those experiences and then you figured you figured yourself out yeah. and you said, okay, this is not for me. Yeah. And now you are here, um, being your own business, being an entrepreneur, having your own business. And now you have these clients, yeah. these, these big clients that are now working with you. Yeah. You know, that it, it to me, that's like an amazing transition. Because not many people are fortunate to be able to go through that transition. I mean, some people might just feel closed in. They might feel like, oh, my God, like now what I do. And, and, and they kind of get stagnant. They get stuck. And they don't see um, options. Yeah. And I and that was one of the things that we were uh, also discussing, that um, it's good to have people around you that truly, truly have your back. And they're there to guide you and give you, um, to to advise you and and making suggestions of where you need to go, because it's very tough when, um, especially when you're in, um, you're an athlete, because yeah. you're surrounded by uh, people. You have agents, you have uh, managers, you have coaches, you have your. Um, you have your teammates, you have the, the, you know, the owner of the company, you have, you know, you have all these, these individuals that are in place and, and I'm not saying any net, anything negative, but I am saying the reality is, do they really have your back? Are they really, um, close to you? Are they the ones that are going to support you in what you're doing? And a lot of times it doesn't. And when something happens and, uh, you know, you either retire out or you get, you know, prematurely injured, those people are no, they're not there. They're not mm -hmm. giving you that support. And then you be become a lone wolf and yeah. then you have to figure yourself out. And, you know, and you are very fortunate that you mm -hmm. were able to, you know, figure things out on, on your own and also have, um, you know, guidance from other people around you. Your uncle was a big influence. And that's one of the things that is very important is to have those people around you that do support you even before you, you get into this, because those are the same people that no matter, you know, if you're on your highest point or on your lowest point, the lowest point is always the important. Those are the people that are truly the people that support you because when mm -hmm. the lowest point is not there, mm -hmm. it's it's ghost. <laughs> it's poof. You don't see anybody around. It's like what I thought that and I thought it, you and loved it, me. And I thought we were you, and, and, and that's and that's the that's the yeah. and that's the really sad part. And it's like I and you know, I'm always saying you know, I, I have people's back. I know what it's like when you're trying to start something out and I'm always working with people that are trying to start out because people need to get their opportunity. Um, and I just, the other day, I've, I um, posted something on Facebook and I said, you know, I'm very vocal about giving people opportunities because people soon forget the, the ones that are been doing this for many years, they're the veterans or, you know, and they kind of do this thing like, oh, how, how long have you been doing this? Or, you know, or, or um, 
um, what was the other one? Uh, so is this the, the, the first time that you're mm -hmm. doing X, Y, Z? And they forget that someone gave them the opportunity exactly. to get them to, exactly. to, that, to the and they, position and that they, And they kind of turn, like, they sum you up. Nope. They kind of get, you know, like when someone looks at you up and down, it's like, <laughs> yeah, okay. And it, and they give that, that attitude, that judgment. And then it's like, okay, sit there and reminisce when you had to start out, when you had to go and, 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 and take the initiative and take that step. It wasn't easy. You had to go, you had to knock on so many doors, people slamming it on you, on you until maybe one or two people gave you that, that chance. Someone came along and they gave you the opportunity because maybe they, they, they had some kind of connection or they could relate. So to me, it's like, you have to sit there, you have to think that if someone gave you the opportunity, you should always give the opportunity to the next person. And that was one of the things that I, I, I always say, because I'm very fortunate that people have given me opportunities. Sometimes I, I, I get people giving me, you know, a little bit of grief, but majority of the, the, the I've been fortunate that the majority of the people around me have given me opportunities here and there. And in return, I do that with the other people. And, you know, and when you're in this type of industry, people are there when, when what? When you're at the highest point, when you're making the money, you're playing the game, you're, you're, you know, you're doing your thing and anything else that happens after that, they don't know where to be found. <laughs> so, you know, and, and just getting back to that, you are, you know, you're in, you've been very fortunate yeah. that you have, um, good people around you. Um, and I just want to touch on that, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah okay, sure. Yeah, so just just to touch on, on what you said, um, don't get me wrong. I, you know, I did have a lot of people that, that helped me out. You know, I had a ton of friends. My friend, uh, Thomas Claiborne, I went to college with, he helped me out, you know, tremendously once my football career was over. One of my best friends, Okachuku, Okaroha, uh, my friend Dom Legrand, of course, my family. Um, but outside of that, I really didn't have anyone else, like, you know, help me out. Didn't really have too many mentors, you know, in the tech field. I knew mm -hmm. I wanted to go into, you know, the tech field. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, and my, my, my uncle, he really doesn't know the tech field. He comes from the educational background. He's been a guidance counselor for 10 years now. Mm -hmm. So for me, I really didn't have any mentors, any, like, uh, technology skills at all. But I know I, want, I, I knew I wanted to go into that industry. And what I did is I, I just want to kind of just take the um, take take the, the listeners through like that process of me, you know, um, learning those skills. So literally, I would like went on to LinkedIn. I'm like, you know, this is what I want to do. I want to open my own company. You know, I was like just hitting, just like literally like sending inboxes, sending emails to like random people. Like, hey, my name is Donnie Fletcher. I'm a former athlete. You know, looking for a mentor in in the tech space. Literally no one was like contacting me back. Um, and then, you know, I just was like, you know what? Um, let me just figure it out, you know? And I ended up just going to the library every single day and just reading books, like sitting in the library, like after work, just reading books, like trying to learn, you know, how do you open a company, you know, and things like that. And I think that's probably what, what helped, helped me out the most is taking that initiative to just figure that out myself. And it's not easy to go in, you know, um, to these networking events. You know, I went to a lot of networking events and say, hey, you know, um, I'm, I have this company called Tangerine. You know, we develop and design websites. Oh, OK. How long have you been around? Oh, we just opened up. What were you doing before this? I played football, you know, <laughs> and they're like, they're not going to take you serious, you know. And so I had a lot of that where people weren't taking me serious in the beginning. And, um, you know, I just kept, you know, I didn't quit. You know, it wasn't easy. going. Like, like I said, it was not easy at all you know i just continue to go continue to you know um connect with people reach out to people and eventually you know people start replying back you know and that's that's kind of how i ended up you know getting my first client and once i got that first client you know built that portfolio up the same thing i just went back and used the same tactics that i used before but just like kind of like double down on it mm-hmm and that's kind of how it kind of like took off. But I didn't have any mentors. I didn't have, you know, outside of uh, my business partner, Chris Campbell, mm -hmm. um, in the tech space or in the, in the, in the business space, you know, that, that, that kind of like, you know, 
took me through the process, you know, so it was tough. It was definitely tough early on doing that and wor worrying about like your rent and things like that is tough. But, you know, I just like and to kind of go back to what I what I said before, what I did is I took that same work ethic that I had in football and I took it over and, and put in same mindset and put that into me opening up a business. And I think that's probably where, you know, most like former athletes or most people just pe period, you know, even if you're transitioning from one industry to the next or if you're going through hardships, it's like you have to, you know, remain focused. You know, you have to. You know your goal is you know what your goal is there's a process to get to your goal most people when they want to be successful they think it's just going to happen overnight you know oh i want to be you know i want to own a digital agency and you just wake up and you just create it and you're just super successful or you want to open up a new app and you think you're going to be facebook you know a month from now but that's not the case you have to have that goal and keep that goal in mind when you were going through those hardships you know it was times when i was in the library and i was just like oh i don't feel like reading I'm like, if I don't read this, you know, yeah, I'm it, not going to learn the it, knowledge. It's a, it, so, it's a drive. Yeah. It's a drive because when you, it's like I, I I mentioned before, when you want something bad enough, yeah. you'll go out and do whatever you need to do mm -hmm. to get it done. Yeah. Even the things you don't like to do or want to do, you'll get it done. Why? Because you know that that is going to uh, influence the end result of yeah. what you're, where you want to be. And it's in, and that's, you know, that's just how it is. Yeah. Um, you know, those successful people that are out there, uh, you know, they, they had to put in their time. They had to go in on their grind and, you know, and this is one of the things that, and even I do this at, at um, a lot of times, a lot of the grind that goes in for people is usually when everybody's asleep mm -hmm. or or yes. people are partying <laughs> or people are um you know on on holiday yeah. those are that's when ev everybody else is kind of like you know on uh relaxed mode yeah that's when everybody um all the other people that are looking to to really get out there and push their business and you know and and make their presence known and and are successful even the ones that are already there, that are successful, those are the ones that are on the clock yeah. and they're grinding it and they're putting in their time. And while everybody else is asleep, they're awake because they're putting in into their business. While everybody else is on vacation, they're working on what's the next step. Mm -hmm. uh, while everybody's, um, you know, on their downtime, they're already thinking what is going to be the plan for the next day. Mm -hmm. And that's just it. It's you have to like invest in yourself the same way that you would do anything else. You have to invest in yourself. And it's basically just figuring things out because nobody's nobody's an expert in anything. It's usually you have to go and do the research. You have to read. You have to learn. Um, and you also have to take action, and execute it. And that's where you know that that the difference between the ordinary and the extraordinary and um you know but you you figured it out um and that's the bottom line you you went you didn't know about how to get into it but you figured it out you found ways to do it i should say i'm figuring it out oh, i don't know yet <laughs> well, you're figuring it yeah, out but we never but, we're never at the end goal you yeah know, no you're always like learning you're always, always evolving learn. yeah. yeah you're always uh learning you're all, all always evolving Yep. And and that's another thing about someone that is truly successful. You talk, you you know you have Warren Buffett, you have Bill Gates, you have uh, uh, Richard Branson, you have uh, Tony Robbins, you have all of these you know very influential, powerful people, and they all say the same thing: you never stop learning. You're always learning something. You're you're you're, you're always adapting to something. You're always evolving as a person, because if you just say, okay, I learned everything. You're not, you're not, you're never going to, your mind is never going to get to that next level. You're, you're never going to be better mm -hmm. if you don't implement that. So, you know, and you, you're absolutely right. You're figuring <laughs> it out. You know, yeah. I'm, I, I'm the same way. I'm always like trying to learn something new and I'm not a hundred percent into 
everything. Some people are like, oh, you know what you're talking about. Yeah, I might know what I'm talking about to a certain extent, but I'm always learning something new. I love learning something new. Um, I, I would be very ignorant if I just keep myself on that level. Um, and the other thing, too, is always being around people that are like-minded, but like-minded that are above you. Mm-hmm. Um, people that um, that might be more intellectually more um, evolved, more mm-hmm. experienced, more knowledgeable. Those are the people that you want to gravitate to because those are the people you can learn from. And uh, if you and and I and that's another thing. And I was actually talking to a friend of mine. Mm-hmm. When you're in a room with someone and you're the only one that is the more intellectual. Mm-hmm you have to get out of that room oh, and yeah. go into another room <laughs> yeah. and it is and and it's not like you're thinking that you're arrogant or you're full of yourself it's no it's just that you are at capacity of what you can learn from other people yeah. but if you're in another room where there's so many intellectuals uh, knowledgeable people you're always going to grow you're always going to learn something from them and you can implement it in the things that you do mm-hmm. then that's the bottom line yeah, because I definitely get that a lot. You know, um, I, I, I feel I'm a pretty humble guy, but I get that a lot. You're, you're arrogant. Oh, you know, you don't want to hang out anymore. And it's like, no, like, you know, I want to be surrounded by people that have the same mindset as me. You know, uh, I don't want to be, you know, when I first got to New York, don't get me wrong. You know, I was just like any other, you know, any other guy in this early 20s. You know, I was out here partying, having fun. But then, you know, reality set in and I'm like, OK, I'm partying now, you know. These are valuable times in my life that I can obtain a lot of knowledge that can get me, you know, extremely successful. You know, 10 years from now, you know, I party, if, if I'm partying, traveling, doing all these things now, where am I going to be 10 years from now? You know, am I going to be stuck, you know, working at, you know, a, a company, uh, you know, trying to still uh, grow that corporate ladder? Or I have an opportunity now to obtain as much, uh, excuse me, obtain a, enough knowledge and you know become successful and start my own company so you know when i when i do turn 40 years old you know or or 10 years from now or five years from now you know that's when i want to be you know be able to travel and you know take my family and um different places Mm -hmm. but right now it's time to like really put in the work and grind that's Mm -hmm. what i feel feel like and it's like i don't go out no you know occasionally i'll go out here and there but you know, most of my nights are, are me, you know, either doing some type of work or doing some type of reading or trying to obtain some type of knowledge because at the end of the day, you know, I want to be great. And in order to be great, you know, you have to put in the work and you have to do it when people aren't doing it, you know. And, and that's when, you know, people are out, you know, on Saturdays, you know, I, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, you see me in my, in, you know, in front of a computer or reading a book. And, and you know, I have a yeah. girlfriend and she's like, oh, you want to go out? I'm like, no, you know. Like, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. And listen, that and that's yeah. and that's the absolute truth. You're 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 prioritizing your time mm-hmm. and investing it into things that are more important to mm-hmm. to get you ahead and to get you where you want to be yeah. uh, down the road. Now, let me ask you something, uh, sure. Donnie. How mm-hmm. old are you? I am 27. Oh, so you're a yeah. listen. Uh, you're, you're a millennial. Yeah. But you know what? See, and and ladies and gentlemen, I we we talked we constantly talk about this all the time. Um, millennials, pe- they get a bad reputation because it's like, oh, they get entitled. They feel like they're entitled. They don't do anything. Da, 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 da. I so far, mm-hmm. I've had about five or six millennials interviewed, and they're all doing phenomenal Mm -hmm. they went and they took the initiative and it's like i i I always say you have to give people opportunity and one of the things that i see a lot and and i am 10 years older than than you guys i'm i'm 38 so i'm a little bit of a late bloomer and um if i know uh things now that i i i did in the past i would have uh changed it but it's an experience you have to go through your experience you have to go through the the motions and my timing wasn't there my timing was supposed to be now but overall you know you guys get a lot of slack you get a lot of you know um people you know coming to you and saying how old are you Mm -hmm. you have a business and stuff like that and they think it's say oh you're too young i can't learn anything from you Mm -hmm. which i i 
and I tell this a lot, I, I take that as, as a crock of bullshit. Mm-hmm. Um, and the reason being is that age is not a factor as to how experienced and how knowledgeable the person is. It happens to be that the person is younger. Yes, it might be that the person is younger. They might have more experience. They might have lived a little bit longer per se mm-hmm. in regards to uh, life experiences yeah. to, to give them that, that or, you know. And I don't go into like, how old are you? Oh no, I'm not going to deal with you. How old are you? Well, I'm not going to. I'm not going to hear what you have to say because what the hell you know. Um, and the reason being is, you can have someone in their twenties. You can have someone in their in their fifties or yeah. in their forties. And the one in the twenties might have more experience, life experience. They have gone through a lot. They experienced a lot. They have uh, learned a lot. Mm-hmm. And then you have someone that is in like in their forties and they haven't learned nothing. They go through the motions. They they're just in the same comfortable setting and they haven't really lived life they just lived everything i you know in in a, a box mm-hmm. so where am i gonna go am i gonna go to the 20 something year old because they will give me stuff that i can learn from yeah and that's my take i said i really don't discriminate on people because you're never too young and you're never too old to be in a business you're never too young or never too old to um you know fulfill your dreams and some people might be a little bit younger Those are the smarter ones because they already know what they want and they're going out and getting it. And I have to give it to um, the millennials because I I meet a lot of you guys um, overall that are just going out and and getting yours, doing doing stuff um, and and really, you know, becoming successful in what you do. So I. Am I hating? No, I can't hate. I have to say, okay, so what is it that you did? And I I can learn from that. Um, And I say this all the time um, because, you know, in in the past, I've I've already had five or six um, people that I've interviewed and they happen to be, you know, in their in their 20s. So it's just a matter of how you take it. And I it's like I said, I don't discriminate. I always give people opportunities for that because you never know, you know, I. If I give an opportunity to someone, that might be the next, you know, the me- the next Bill Gates, or it could be the next Oprah, or it can be, you know, uh, the next, you know, whatever um, artist that that's trending right now. So, why do, am I going to take that away from them? Because what? Because of whatever the circumstances are, because they're new, because they're young, or or they're too old, or you know, y- you can't do that. You can't. You just have to give people the benefit of the doubt. Be open and let them. Um, you know, be able to pursue their dreams. And uh, just like I have to reflect on when someone gave me the opportunity. And every time that you give someone opportunity, another opportunity does come to you. It's just of, of the circle of, of being good. The energy is there. It's, it just keeps going in a circle. And, and we all have a, a place to shine, a, a place to, to be able to have, you know, success. Why am I going to be selfish and take that away? So, you know, these are just like things that uh, overall I, I, I love to to get people's thoughts on. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I learned a lot from you. Um, and you're not arrogant as people portray you. You know, very <laughs> down to earth, very down to earth, very humble. And I give you a lot of respect for that, um, you know, and you're definitely succeeding in what you're doing and you're going to continue going forward and and i know i'll see you soon somewhere in some magazine saying hey you know you're like the 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 you know a a a big digital marketing company Mm -hmm. and i want that for you thank you and i see that coming so now donnie yes for our listeners Mm -hmm. where can they find you Yes, so you can find uh, our website is www.tangerine, that's with two I's and no E, dot com. And uh, we're also on Instagram as well, the same thing, tangerine, two I's, no E. And um, I also have a blog as well called um, The Value Corner. So you can uh, check out my uh, blogs. And on my blog, what what I'm trying to do with that is just give... um, you know, um, fitness tips, lifestyle uh, tips, and business tips as well. From um, you know workouts to um, credit repair to um, anything you think of. You know, I, I want to try to um, engage with 
you know, the people that are following my blog and try to, you know, give as much knowledge that I have and learn as much from from uh, them as well. So those are the awesome, places. awesome, awesome. So, guys, for all of you out there that want to um, continue listening or if you this is your first time listening in and you want to know more about us, you can check us out on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter at Work Your Money or Work Your Money Podcast. We have a website is um, workyourmoney.net. And we also have you can also listen to us on um, iTunes and Stitcher and even uh, YouTube, if you want to uh, listen to the audio, or if by chance we have a video and we recorded, you can um, look under Work Your Money Podcast. So, guys, until the next time. I want to give my personal Instagram too. Oh, uh, okay, go it's, ahead. Uh, D Fletch, that's F L E T C H 111. So, that's oh, my personal oh. one if you want to follow me there. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, <laughs> so. For all you out there that want to follow Donnie on Instagram, you have his personal <laughs> Instagram. So say, hey, what's up? Um, so, guys, until the next time, this is your Work and Money podcast. Good night.